Okay, good evening everyone. I am Shivani Dhok and I welcome you all for the week 7th uh, week seventh tutorial for the course of Modern Digital Communication Techniques. And uh, as every week, uh, this entire tutorial will be divided in two parts. The first part is basically a recap of week 7 content. And followed by, I will take around 10 questions which, is, which are related to the content of this particular week. Okay, so let's start with the recap of uh, week 7 content. So this week 7 content uh, actually started with multi-dimensional signals. Uh, and these multi-dimensional signals were discussed for time frequency as well as time frequency. Further, the concept of frequency shift keying was discussed. So this frequency shift keying is basically a multi-dimensional signal along frequency and the signal or the comp bandpass signal for this modulation scheme for mth symbol is given as under root uh, 2 by 2 e by t cos 2 pi f c t plus 2 pi m delta f t now this this thing m delta f the this delta f is the frequency variation and uh, the current frequency or the instantaneous or the frequency for the mth symbol is basically fm equal to fc plus m delta f and whatever symbol this change in frequency or shift in frequency basically leads to different type of symbols or different signal component symbol components that i need to actually transmit furthermore the correlation was a Correl correlation with the equivalent baseband was uh, discussed which came out to be this one and then this frequency deviation, the minimum frequency deviation, uh, if we are modulating each frequency component with a one dimensional signal, then it should be 1 by 2t. And if we are considering a two dimensional constellation, for example, a qualm, then we should go for a 1 by t um, uh, minimum uh, frequency shift or minimum frequency deviation of 1 by t. After that, the frequency division multiplexing and orthogonal frequency division multiplexing was also discussed. Once this, this was covered, uh, this frequency shift keying was the last part that was covered which comes under the category of uh, memoryless uh, modulation schemes. And after that, the concept of uh, modulation schemes with memory was introduced. So, in order to compare what exactly... Uh, the first modulation scheme that was introduced was this NRZI. But to understand NRZI, first NRZ was uh, introduced. So what does this NRZ does? It means that if, we, if it is 1, then we'll transmit some plus V volts. And if it is 0, then we'll transmit it minus V volts. But if we are going for NRZI, what we'll do is we will introduce a phase shift. of 180 degrees when we encounter a 1 and this mathematically can be given by this formula written here bk equal to ak uh, xor with bk minus 1 now why the, is this an important thing how does this help so this helps in clock synchronization for example if i am transmitting a long stream of 1 now we need to have, we need the knowledge of uh, the symbol duration that we are having. So the transmitter and receiver both will be generating clocks, but there might be some offset at both of these. However, in order to decode it properly, we should have these two synchronized properly. Now this, if I'm having a long sequence of ones, it gets difficult to understand from where it is being transmitted and what exactly is the time instant we are looking at however if we are having uh, uh, nrzi so if i have a long bit stream as 1111 as i am encountering the one i'll get a 180 phase shift so the sim signal that i'll transmit will be of this form and this is sent for t duration this is also sent for t duration so because of these transitions which are arising i can have a help in clock synchronization at my receiver end 
next thing in the memory uh, with memory modulation scheme was introduced that was continuous phase shift key, uh, continuous phase frequency shift scheme that is cpfsk for the cpfsk we consider this dt which is a data signal which is basically collection of or summation over n in gt minus nt where this t is the symbol duration and this in is basically the data carrying thing or get data carrying component and it can plus minus one plus minus three and so on and this gt is again my uh, signal or pulse shaping signal and here there are various pulse shaping uh, signals that can be used for cpfsk we have this pulse shaping signal as one by two t over the range of zero to capital t and the signal, the complex baseband equivalent signal that we will be transmitting is given by the formula which is here, which is under root 2 e by t e power j 2 pi t f t integral minus infinity to t d tau and d of tau d tau plus phi naught, where this phi naught is some phase offset. And the signal st that will be in the band pass will be basically real part of this signal which comes out to be this where this phi ti this phi ti is given by this formula which is theta n plus this where this theta n is given by this formula here and uh, h is 2 fd f fdt and this h is sometimes referred as the modulation index and this signal qt basically corresponds to this part here and this qt is given as 0 t by 2t for this range and 1 by 2 for t greater than 2 so this q of t this q of t is basically integral of 0 to t g tau t tau or i can also write yeah okay, see, minus i can write it as minus infinity to t g tau d tau so this was cpfsk and after that the continuous phase modulation that is cpm was introduced which is basically a generalization of the cpfsk and it said that this phi i of t this thing which appears here is same is given by this formula here where this ik is mre information carrying signal which will be again similar to this and this hk is modulation index and similar to the definition in the previous case we have this gt uh, this qt defined as something like this and then we had also discussed the concept of full response cpm and partial response cpm in this full response cpm we have this gt uh, which is present even after the t duration whereas for this c partial response we have it at exact i'm sorry for full response it is for entire t duration for partial it can go on any questions okay if there are no questions then let's start solving the questions which I have planned to cover today. Okay, so yeah. So uh, let SMT is equal to under root 2e by t cos 2 pi fc m delta ft. We need to find the low pass equivalent signal this and we need to find this also. SMT is an uh, inner product of this and we need to have we need to divide it by E M and root E N and also these two we need to find okay so this is the question that we are having here so let's what we'll do is we'll start finding uh, this thing inner product of SMT and SNT and uh, it was discussed in class that the energy of this signal is root e. We'll also show it in upcoming questions which will be coming up. So basically this root em and root en are root e so this will correspond to e. So let us first find 1 by e inner product of SMT SNT 
which is 1 by e into 2 e by t integral 0 to t smt is cos of 2 pi fc plus m delta f t into cos of 2 pi fc plus n delta f t dt okay this e and e gets cancelled i can take this two inside and two cos a cos b is basically cos a plus b plus cos a minus b so this thing is basically 1 by t integral 0 to t cos a plus b that is 2 pi fc plus this plus 2 pi fc and this component so this is this comes out as 4 pi fc t plus 2 pi m plus n delta f t plus cos of this component minus this component so this comes out to be 2 pi m minus n delta f t t t okay so now what we are having here is 1 by t cos of oh sorry sin 4 pi fc t plus 2 pi m plus n delta f t upon 4 pi fc plus 2 pi m plus n delta f plus sine of 2 pi m minus n delta f t upon 2 pi m minus n delta f and this ranges from 0 to t okay now what we have here is 1 by t inside the bracket this will be see this fc and t so what assumption we will be considering is this fc is some k times t so this becomes fc t will be equal to some integer k and this k belongs to some integer okay so this becomes sin k times 4 uh, k 4 pi plus 2 pi uh, this term multiplied by t so uh, 2 pi integer integer multiple of 2 pi sine of integer multiple of 2 pi plus theta will be sine theta so this i can write as sine of 2 pi m plus n delta f t minus sine of 2 pi fc i'm sorry this will be 0 upon 4 pi fc plus 2 pi m plus n delta f plus this term will be sine 2 pi m minus n delta f t whole divided by 2 pi m minus n delta f capital T this is also capital T I'm sorry yeah now the assumption is this fc is very high so if this fc is very high this term will be close to zero if fc is very large okay so now this uh, this thing becomes let me add a ph so what we have is 1 by e smt snt is equal to sine of 2 pi m minus n delta ft upon 2 pi m minus n 
delta f t i hope this is clear now Now second thing that we need to find is, this is the first thing that we had to find and the second thing that we need to find is SMLT comma SMLT. Okay, so what we have is your SMT is equal to under root 2e pi t cos 2 pi fc plus delta f m t and this I can write as real part of under root 2 e by t e power j 2 pi delta f m t into e power j 2 pi f c t okay and again we need to normalize it with uh, under root e m l under root e m l so now if i need to anyway normalize it okay let me do it properly yeah so this s m l t is basically under root 2 e by t e power j 2 pi f c uh, 2 pi delta f m t so now let us find what is e m l this comes out to be integral 0 to t s m l t absolute square d t this is equal to integral 0 to t 2 e by t e power j 2 pi delta f m t t t so this comes out to be 2 e by t integral 0 i'm sorry this is absolute value what rubbish i'm doing 0 to t d t this is 2 e by t multiplied by t which is equal to 2e okay so therefore let's do this now s m l t s n l t divided by root e m l root e n l and this comes out to be integral 0 to t this quantity e power j to pi f c not to pi f c e power j to pi m delta f t into e power minus j to pi m delta f n delta f t upon 2 e t t and this gets multiplied by 2 e by t this gets cancelled so what we are having here is 1 by t integral 0 to t e power j 2 pi m minus n delta f t d t this i can write as 1 by t e power j 2 pi m minus n delta f t whole divided by j 2 pi m minus n delta f t sorry no t like this and this is evaluated from 0 to capital t and this comes out to be 1 by t e power j 2 pi m minus n delta f t minus 1 whole divided by 2j into pi m minus n delta f okay 
so what we are having is 1 by t e power j 2 pi m minus n delta f t minus 1 upon 2 j pi m minus n delta f t sorry delta f this I can write as 1 upon t I can take common e power pi m n delta f t from numerator so what I have is j 2 pi j pi m minus n delta f t and ins inside the bracket what I am having is e power j pi m minus n delta f t minus e power minus j pi m minus n delta f t this I will divide by 2j and this remaining component will come out as pi m minus n delta f okay yeah so this thing is equal to e power j pi m minus n delta f t and this quantity here is basically sine so this we can write as sine of pi m minus n delta f t upon pi m minus n delta f okay now let's do a small trick and let us consider real part of this quantity let's say this is rho mn let's consider the real part of this rho mn okay so if we do that this quantity here is a real quantity so this won't get affected but real part of this sorry real part of this will be cos of this quantity so how, what does we what do we have is this comes out to be cos of pi m minus n delta f multiplied by sine of pi m minus n delta f t upon pi m minus n delta f t now let's multiply and divide by 2 so the numerator this part the numerator is basically 2 times sine a sine b uh, sin a cos a which comes out to be 2 times sin a so this is equal to sorry 2 times sin a cos a that comes out to be sin of 2 a so this is equal to sin of 2 pi m minus n delta f t whole divided by 2 pi m minus n delta f now if you compare this this quantity and this quantity these both are identical they are exactly the same so if I need to find this this is basically real part of this quantity so I can write this as this is 1 by E SMT SMT this is a small uh, aside information or a key point that comes out from this entire exercise that we have done that if I find the correlation of the signal directly that is uh, correlation of uh, correlation coefficient for the signal which is in uh, band pass and if we try to relate it to its equivalent low pass correlation of the signal in equivalent low pass so that comes out to be something like this that is this correlation for the signal in band pass is basically equal to real part of the correlation of this low pass equivalent signals any questions okay if there are no questions then let us go ahead to the next question that I have planned to cover today. So what we have been given here is uh, we, what we have been asked here is give the dimension of the following constellations and also find the symbol duration Ts if the bit duration is Tb. 
now if we ob uh, if we recall if we recall uh, the way we represent this pulse amplitude modulation and psk and fsk so in terms of its basis so if we recall that then for pam smt was equal to s m or rather it was e yeah let's write it sm into ft where this ft was basis only one basis was required which means that this pulse amplitude modulation signal was one dimensional since only one basis was required if we go for psk this smt was equal to sm1 f1t plus sm2 f2t where this f1 was the uh, in phase quadr uh, component that is under root 2 by eg cos 2 pi fct and this f2t was a quadrature component which was minus under root 2 eg sin 2 pi fct so these are the two bases that we are having here which clearly indicates that if i have two bases it is a two dimensional constellation Similarly, this applies for QAM also. QAM also had a similar representation with the help of basis functions. So, QAM is also a two-dimensional constellation. But now, if we go for FSK, now if we go for FSK, what do we have is entire frequency that all the frequencies are orthogonal to each other. Which means that I can't represent one frequency with the help of another frequency component. And hence if I have m pre orthogonal frequencies, I need to represent each of them with different orthogonal signals. We have seen here that when we set this delta f as 1 by t or 1 by 2t, then in that situation we get orthogonal signals. These signals, this SMT, this SMT th uh, will be orthogonal to each other which means that which clearly means that uh, we need all of these signals individually to represent the entire constellation space which means that this FSK if I have M array FSK then I'll have M dimensional constellation I hope this is this part is clear to everyone. So what we have been asked is we need to determine the dimension of these constellations which we are which are given and also we need to find the symbol duration TS uh, if the bit duration is given. Now if we recall the symbol duration TS is nothing but k times TB where k is the number of bits that are uh, re that are required to represent that particular constellation and this is give this k is basically log m to the base 2 okay so this thing this ts is basically log m to the base 2 multiplied by tb okay so with this information and formula that we have here, let us try to solve the question that is given here. So the first question is we have 2 PAM that is M equal to 2. So what do we have here? We have M is equal to 2. And this is a pulse amplitude modulation signal which means that this will be 1 dimensional. And this ts will be log 2 to the base 2 times tb which is equal to t. Okay. So now let us go for this uh, psk. We have this m equal to 2. Now this psk, this psk is represented in this format which is a two dimensional constellation. So this is two dimensional And TS is again log 2 to the base 2 times TB which comes out to be TB. Okay. Now let us go for this FSK. So this F equal to 2. Now this is also 
it is fsk if it is m fsk m r e f s k then its dimension is 2 so this is two dimensional ds is equal to again log 2 to the base 2 times db which is db okay now let us go for the next question so what we have is 16 pam now here m is equal to 16 since it is pulse mo amplitude modulation signal this is again a one dimensional and ts is log 16 to the base 2 times tb 16 i can write as 2 to the power 4 and therefore this can be written as 4 times tb for the 16 psk again we have m equal to 16 now it is a psk psk signal and since it is a psk it is a two dimensional signal so this is two dimensional ts will be again equal to log 16 to the base 2 times tb which is 4 tb these are very basic concepts but this should be crystal clear when you saw, see any constellation uh, given to you you should be able to understand like how much uh, time duration i'll need if i have keep, I, if i have been given a bit duration what are the number of bits are, that are required what is the dimensions what are the dimensions that it is consumed and all those things should be there in your mind and you should be able to understand by just looking at the constellation which you have been given the next thing is 16 fsk now as discussed earlier 16 fsk which means that m equal to 16 which means it will be m dimensional which means that this constellation is 16 dimensional then the symbol duration is will remain same tp that is 4 times tp okay this was a very simple exercise but was somewhat important so that you are able to interpret the constellations in a better way. Any questions? Okay, if there are no questions then let us go to the third question that I want to solve today so what we have been given here is we need to find the symbol energy EM the average symbol energy E average and the average bit energy for orthogonal FSK okay so let us try to do that now <coughs> okay so let us try to do that we have this em and this is integral 0 to t smt square dt okay and this smt is under root 2e by t cos of 2 pi fc plus m delta f t so this comes out to be This comes out to be integral 0 to t to e by t cos square 
टू पाई एफ सी प्लस एम डेल्टा एफ टी 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 विच आई कैन राइट एज जीरो टू टी टू ई बाई टी वन प्लस कॉस ऑफ फोर पाई एफ सी प्लस एम डेल्टा एफ टी dt so this is 0 to t 2 e by t dt this is by 2 by 2 yeah so this gets cancelled i can remove it so this is e by t integral 0 to t cos of 4 pi fc plus m delta f t dt now let us set this delta f as 1 by t since we have this orthogonality property coming in picture so let us set it as 1 by t so if we have 1 by t it will be orthogonal for both the type of constitutions that we are having so this pm is equal to p e by t integral 0 to t t t plus integral 0 to t cos 2 pi and let's say this fc and fc is some k by t or pi fc plus m by t t t t okay so this comes out to be e by t into t plus integral 0 to t into cos of 4 pi i'm oh, sorry we integrated it this will be sin of 4 pi k plus m by t t upon 4 pi k plus m by t this is multiplied by e by t e by t from 0 to capital t this comes out to be e plus e sin 4 pi k plus m minus sin 0 is 0 divided by 4 pi k plus m now this this thing this thing here is basically integer multiple of 4 pi this k and m both are integers so this is integer multiple of 4 pi and hence this thing is also equal to 0 so this thing is also equal to 0 so this comes out to be e therefore em is equal to e for all m equal to 1 2 and so on till m therefore the average energy that is e average <coughs> this e average is given as 1 by m assuming equiprobable symbol summation m equal to 1 to m em which is equal to 1 by m summation m equal to 1 to m e which comes out to be equal to e and the bit energy that is eb will be e average divided by the number of bits required for one symbol that is log m to the base 2 which comes out to be e upon log of m to the base 2 any questions
okay if there are no questions then the next question that will let's go on to the next question and what is being asked here is we need to find the euclidean distance between any two constellation points in an mre fsk then what is the minimum euclidean distance that you can have and how can you increase it okay so let us first try to find the constellation points in this mre fsk but uh, for that one thing we should One thing we should understand is like when we had done a comp constellation, we had drawn it something like this. Let's say this is zero. Then this is this. This is this was minus t. This was minus three t. This was sorry plus. This was minus t. This was minus three t. And these things which we had represent these were uh, in with respect to S M. Which was SM. SM means this was like SM and this SMT was SMFT. Okay, now if I am having an FSK signal, FSK constellation, so for FSK constellation, all M signals are orthogonal to each other, which means that FMT, which is equal to Mth basis will be simply equal to SMT that signal divided by under root of its energy which is under root EM and in the previous question itself we had found out this EM was equal to E so this is SMT under divided by root E and how can we get SMT from uh, FMT so we just need to multiply it by FM so which means that FMT will be equal to under root, sorry, the signal SMT will be equal to under root E FMT. Now let us try to visualize this for M equal to 2 and M equal to 3. So let us have M equal to 2. So what do we have here is something like this. Okay, so this one corresponds to F1 T, this one uh, corresponds to F2 T and these are the two points. So for F1 T, it will be under root E comma 0. So this is root E comma 0 and this will be 0 comma root E. These are the two points and if I need to calculate the distance between these two points, what will it be? This will be simply under root of e plus e which comes out to be under root sorry under root 2 e okay am i clear so if I go for, now let us try to extend it for m equal to 3. So how will it look? It will be something like this. Let's say this is F1t. This is F2t. This is F3t. So this point will be root e 0 0. This point will be 0 0 root sorry this will be 0 root e 0 and this point will be 0 0 root e so again if we consider this this distance this distance this distance 
these all will be same so distance between any two points will be de which comes out to be under root e plus e which is root 2 now let us extend it extend it for any m so for any m the distance between let us look at two constellation points so let's say this was sm and, S and this was sn where m and n were either one or two similarly this was s1 s2 s3 and so on so now let us say this sm vector will be 0 0 0 and so on root e 0 0 and this is at mth location similarly sn bar will be 0 0 root e 0 and this thing is at nth location and Euclidean distance DE is simply norm of SM bar minus SN bar which will be norm of this is L2 norm that is Euclidean norm of 0 0 and so on with plus minus root e comma 0 and so on till plus minus minus plus root e okay so this is let's say at nth location and this is at mth location We are doing SM minus SN, so let's keep this as positive and let's keep this as negative. Yeah. 0, 0. And norm of this, so norm of this vector will be all zeros plus E plus E, which comes out to be under root 2E. So for all the constellations, uh, like for all the values of M, let's say it is 2, 3 or anything, this Euclidean distance comes out to be under root e and since it is independent of my indexing m and even it is independent of capital m this itself is equal to de min which is equal to minimum euclidean distance okay and the next question that was asked to here was how can you increase it now in order to increase it the only way to do so is increase the value of e so this can be increased by increasing the value of e and many times it is not possible uh, to increase a value of e arbitrarily due to the power constraints of the device which we are using and other resource needs. So we can't in increase this Euclidean distance to a large extent. I hope that will be clear. So this was the third, uh, this was the fourth question that I had planned today. Any questions at this point?
okay if there are no questions then let us go ahead with the next question that we'll be solving so if what we have been given here is in binary fsk the signal the given signal waveforms are s1t is equal to 5 cos uh, 20000 pi t and s2t is 5 cos 22000 pi t zero uh, and these are valid non zero only for uh, t ranging from zero to capital t we need to find the smallest value of uh, t such that s1 t and s2 t are orthogonal so what we'll do is what we are having is this s1 t is 5 cos 20000 pi t and this s2 t is 5 cos 22000 pi t this i can write as 5 cos 2 pi into 1000 t and this i can write as 5 cos 2 pi into 1000 sorry 10000 plus 1000 t okay now <coughs> Let's say this is FC and we have this is also FC and this is delta F. Okay, so the frequency deviation delta F is 1000 hertz. I hope this till this point it is clear. Now, for these signals to be orthogonal, for these signals to be orthogonal, the condition that we have is these are real signals therefore we are modulating it with a one dimensional signal these are real signals so in order to have those them orthogonal this delta f should be equal to 1 upon 2 pi okay so this delta f this delta f should be equal to 1 upon 2 t So that S1T and S2T are orthogonal. If that is so, then this T should be equal to 1 upon 2 times delta F, which comes out to be 1 by 2 into 1000, which is equal to 0 0.5 into 10 to the power minus 3 seconds, which is equal to 0 0.5 milliseconds this is the value of capital T that we can use. any questions so these were all the questions that I, I had planned to cover for this uh, FSK or to be specific for this multi-dimensional signals part now uh, and more specifically for the memoryless constellation schemes and now the remaining five questions I shall focus on the with memory schemes okay so in order to do that uh, let us go with the sixth question that I had planned to cover today so what does it say we need to draw the output waveforms for the following input bit stream if the NRZ modulations uh, technique is used so what does NRZ mean so NRZ means this thing means if it is 1 then I need to transmit plus V volts and if it is 0 I need to transmit minus V volts okay so let us try to do that so what we'll do is let me create three lines here okay Okay. 
let it be as it is. Okay, so let's see. This is for the first one. This is second. This is for the third. And let if I count it, this is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Ten. So this is let's see, this is hero. This is 11 so let's say we have this and I'll need this again for the next question so let me copy it and reuse the same thing yeah like this okay yeah so let us go ahead with the first bit stream that is given so what is the bit stream that is given to us it is one one zero zero one zero one zero one one so it is one one zero zero one zero one zero one one so for one for one we have plus v volt so this upper line corresponds to plus v volt for one again we have plus v volt then we have zero for zero we go to minus v volt like this I'm sorry this is again zero then it is one it is zero then it is one again it is zero and it is one so this is the waveform for the first signal that we are having. The second bit stream is 100100101. So what we are having is it is 1 which is plus V and it is 0, 0, 2 times 0 so it will consume 2 bit slots. Then it is 1, then 0, for again 2 bit slots, then it is 1, then again 0 for 2 bit slots, and then it is again 1. And the last bit stream that we have been given is all 1s, that is 1, 1, 1, 1. And this is basically all ones, so this will look something like this. Yeah. So this is what we'll transmit if we are transmitting it through NRZ modulation technique. Okay. This is the answer for this question. Now, let us look at the next question. If you have any questions in this part, if you have any queries in this part, please let me know. Okay, if there are no questions, then let us go ahead with the next the seventh question yeah okay <coughs> so 
so we uh, we are, we need to draw the waveform the output waveform for the input bit stream following input bit stream uh, if the nrzi modulation technique is used so now we are doing nrzi modulation technique so let us say that initial state let's say is minus v and when one is input change the phase okay so initially initially so this this part is zero this part is zero right This is zero. So initially, for all the three cases, this is at minus v volts. Okay. So now, let us see what is the first bit stream that we are having. It is one one zero zero one zero one zero one one. So now it is here. It is at this point here, and now it is seeing a one. And when it is seeing a one, we need to change the phase. It was initially at at minus one eighty degree. So now we'll make it to initially it was at one eighty degree. Now we'll make it go to zero. Something like this. That is plus v. Then again we are encountering a one. So now we'll make it like this. Again change the state. Now we are seeing a zero. So it will remain in same state. Again we are seeing a zero. Still it will remain in same state. Now we are seeing a one. Now again we will go to the next, uh, the new state. That is the another state. That is plus v. Now I am encountering a zero. So it will remain in the same state. Now again I am able to see a one here. So I'll change my state. I'll change a change its phase to minus. Uh, sorry, to one eighty degree. Then this, then I am seeing a zero. It will remain in same state. Now again I am seeing a one. It will go to another state. Now again I am seeing a one. Now it will again get as minus v volt. And this will continue for the coming streams. I hope this is clear. Now let us look at the next stream that we are having. That is one zero zero, one zero zero, one zero zero one. Okay. Any questions at this point before starting uh, with the next part of this question? if there are no questions let us then let us look at the second part of it so initially it was at uh, state minus v now after coming at this point the symbol or uh, the bit that it is obtaining is 1 so if it was at minus v after seeing 1 it will go to plus v and stay there for one time duration now sub after that what bit does it see it sees a zero so when it is seeing a zero it will remain in the same state it won't change its state it will still be plus v volts then again it after coming here again it is seeing a zero so it will stay in the same state now after that at this particular time it is encountering a one and once it sees a one it will then change its state from plus v volt to minus v and stay there for one symbol duration after that it is receiving a zero now since it is receiving a zero it won't be changing its state and it will still remain in the same state like this again it is seeing a zero here again it is receiving a zero so once it has received a zero again it won't change its state and it will still remain as minus v volts 
after that now at this time instant it is receiving a one and if it is receiving a one now it will change its state to plus v volt like this after that it sees a zero and when it sees a zero it will stay in the same state again after that it is seeing a zero only so again it will remain in the same state but after that the last bit that it is seeing is one so it will go from plus v volts to minus v volts any questions so let us take the last example of this type uh, and get a much better clarity regarding this this is a very simple concept but just to understand what is happening we'll go through the go through these examples once okay so now what it is getting is oh, an all one stream so let me write it here first which is one 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 okay so initially it was at uh, let me clear so sorry. initially it was here so now after seeing a one it will go from minus v volt to plus v volt and stay here now again it is seeing a one so it will go from plus v to minus v and stay now it is seeing a one so again it will go from minus v to plus v it is seeing a one so it will go again it is seeing a one here so it will go from plus v to minus v and stay then again it is seeing a 1 so it will change its state and stay here seeing a 1 again it is a 1 so it will change its state again it is a 1 again it is a 1 again it is a 1 and so on so this is what we will uh, send when I am having all one bit all entire stream as one now if you observe this nrz it was all uh, this was the stream that i was sending for nrz for the same bit stream however when i am doing nrz i the stream that i am sending is something like this Which is not at all a constant signal that I am sending and this kind of signal will help in synchronizing the clock in a better fashion at the receiver end any questions Okay, if there are no questions, then let us go to the eighth question that we are having here. So what we are given is a bit stream of one 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 is sent using NRZ and nrzi we need to find the average value of the signal and the uh, energy of the signal so we need to find the average value of signal that is being sent and we need to find the average energy of the signal that is being consumed okay so let's do that so i'll make two columns one will be for nrz and another is for nrzi Transmitting this is positive, and this is the negative thing that I am having. And let's say this is plus V, this is minus V, this is plus V, this is minus V. So, here the average value of signal corresponds to the time average to be very clear. Okay, this is zero. 
टू थ्री फोर फाइव सिक्स सेवन एट नाइन जीरो वन टू थ्री फोर फाइव सिक्स सेवन एट नाइन एंड वॉट वी आर ट्रांसमिटिंग इज वन 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 सॉरी इट इज नाइन टाइम्स राइट वन 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 सिक्स So this is what we are transmitting. So if we go for uh, an R Z for one, I'll be sending plus V volts, so it will be V throughout. However, for an R Z, if my initial condition, initial state was minus V, so I'll be transmitting plus V, then minus V, then plus V, then minus V, then again plus V. Minus V. Then again, change of state as I am having a one. Again, change of state. Again, change of state. So something like this, I'll be transmitting. So now let us find out. Average signal value. So this is so for nine. Uh, time slot durations like for 9 TS durations I am sending 1 so that will be equal to 9 times TS divided by 9 TS am I right for 9 TS durations so what exactly is happening is exactly is happening is I am doing 1 upon 9 TS from 0 to TS and this I am doing for 0 to 9 TS DT and this comes out to be 9 TS upon 9 TS which is equal to sorry V, v which equals to V volts now if I do the same thing average signal value then here this will be equal to for first TS duration I am sending a plus V volt so that will be VTS for second I am sending a minus VTS third I am sending a plus VTS for fourth I am sending a minus VTS for fifth I am sending a VTS For 6th I am sending a minus VTS, for 7th I am sending a VTS, for 8th I am sending a minus VTS and for 9th I am sending a VTS and this total thing I am sending from 9 time slot durations. So if you observe carefully these gets these get cancelled and what we are left with is VTS by 9 so this comes out to be V by 9 which is significantly less which is less than v okay now let us do average energy value so this average energy will be equal to 1 upon 9 ts integral 0 to 9 ts v square dt which is equal to v square and similarly average energy this is time average to be very precise this is a time average so this comes out to be 1 upon 9 ts integral 0 to 9 ts and if we do square of this this will be v square for entire duration so this will also be v square dt which comes out to be v square so the energy consumed is same however the average signal value which I am sending for uh, NRZI is close to zero compared to the average signal value which I am sending for <coughs> the average signal value which I am sending for NRZ 
Any questions? Okay, if there are no questions, then let us go ahead and look at this ninth question that we are given. Okay, so what we have been asked is for a CPFS ke signal, let H is equal to 0.5 and GT is a rectangular pulse for of duration T. Now what all things do we need to specify? We need to specify phi T comma I, ST and instantaneous phase and frequency. These are the four things that we need to give. So what is given is this H is equal to 0.5 and this GT is equal to a rectangular pulse. So let me write it specifically this GT this GT is basically 1 over 2T for 0 less than or equal to T less than or equal to capital T. So this is the GT that is being given to us and this H is equal to let's say HK is equal to 0 0.5 now the general formula for this phi t i is given here. Phi t i is to pi i k h k q t minus k t. Okay, so this is equal to this is equal to two pi h k i k q t minus n t okay and this is equal to 2 pi h k is 0.5 so this is 0 0.5 i k q t minus n t and this comes out to be pi i k q t minus n t what do we mean by this q t minus n t so this q t is basically a function which is minus infinity to tau g t g tau d tau and this comes out to be so this this is this signal basically so if we integrate it it will be like this and then increase and remain constant it will be something like this so this integration this integration is basically integral 0 to t 1 by 2 t t tau and this is equal to t upon 2 t before this it is 0 and when t is equal to capital T this it this takes a value of half so this value will be half so therefore this thing this thing here will be 0 for t less than or equal to 0 it will be t upon 2 t for 0 less than equal to t less than or equal to capital T be 1 by 2 for t greater than t so just to be precise with my notations let's say this is for t less than 0 so this is what we are having here now if qt is this then what will be what will be qt minus nt so this qt minus nt will be basically 0 for t less than nt that is this quantity this quantity which is argument of this q uh, should be less than 0 t minus nt should be less than 0 that's why it should t should be less than nt it will be t upon <coughs> sorry it will be t minus nt 
अपॉन कैपिटल टू टी और एन टी लेस देन और इक्वल टू जीरो लेस देन और इक्वल टू एन प्लस वन टी एंड दिस विल बी इक्वल टू वन बाय टू और फॉर टी ग्रेटर देन एन प्लस वन टी ओके एंड वॉट टू बी हैव हियर इज दिस फाइ टी कॉमा कैपिटल आई इज इक्वल टू फाइ आई एन आई के क्यू टी माइनस एन टी दिस इज वॉट वी आर हैविंग इट राइट नाउ एंड देर फोर वी हैव सीन दैट दिस एस टी दिस एस के टी this st is equal to under root 2e by t cos of 2 pi fct plus pi t comma i plus pi not this comes out to be under root 2e by t cos of Two pi f c t plus pi i k q t minus n t plus pi not. Okay. Now this entire argument here, this entire argument is the instantaneous phase. So this theta t is equal to two pi f c t plus pi i k q t minus n t plus phi not this is instantaneous phase and f t which is equal to instantaneous frequency <coughs> This is equal to d d t of theta t, which comes out to be uh, one upon two pi d d t of theta t, which comes out to be f c plus pi i k d d t of q t minus n t. Now, if you observe carefully, d d t of q t minus n t will be nothing but this. g t or to be very specific it will be g of t minus n t by if you differentiate zero in uh, for this range if you differentiate this will be equal to zero if in this range if you differentiate it will be one upon two t and this range if you differentiate it will be zero so this quantity here this quantity will be basically equal to zero for t less than n t This will be one upon two t for n t less than or equal to, or uh, let me do it very specifically just to avoid any confusion that we are having here. Let's not confuse you all. Okay, so what we are having is f t is equal to f c plus pi i k. d d t of q t minus n t. Okay. Now we have seen that this q t minus n t is basically zero for t less than n t. It is t minus n t by two t for n t. Less than or equal to small t, less than or equal to n plus one capital T. It is equal to one over two t. Uh, sorry, one over t. For t greater than n plus one t. Okay. Now if I do d d t of q t minus n t, this will be equal to d d t of zero, which is zero. 
for t less than or equal to n t this will be equal to t t t of t minus n t upon 2 t which is equal to 1 upon 2 t for n t less than or equal to t less than or equal to n plus 1 capital T and this is equal to t d t of half which is equal to 0 for n plus 1 sorry for this t greater than or equal to n plus 1 Okay, so this is what we are having here. Now if you compare this, how does this look? This looks something like this. This looks something like this. This is nt, this is n plus 1t and this is 1 by 2t. So to be very specific, this thing is nothing but g of t minus capital NT. Okay, so this thing is g of capital NT. So what we can conclude is this d dt of q of n t minus NT is nothing but g of t minus NT which is defined as 0 for t less than 0, 1 upon 2t for 0 less than or equal to t less than or equal to capital T and this is equal to 0 for t greater than or equal to capital T and therefore instantaneous frequency Instantaneous frequency is f t is given as pi sorry f c plus pi i k g t minus n t. Any questions? Any questions at this point? Okay, so if there are no questions in this particular discussion, then let us go ahead and solve the last question that I have planned to cover today. So uh, this is a very different type of questions, so, but might be helpful in analyzing several things which may come up in uh, upcoming lectures. So I thought it would be uh, good if I take them, take it in this session. So what is being given is an information source generates the sequence i n for n ranging from minus infinity to infinity and i forgot to mention here this generates this sequence which is had generated is independent okay that is i n is independent of i n plus 1. Similarly, i n plus 1 is independent of whatever is being transmitted at, at some i n plus k, where k is not 1. Okay, and uh, the probability distribution for this i n is given. So, this i n can basically take three values that is 2, minus 2, and 0. So these are the three values which it can take with certain probabilities. That is, it i n will be equal to two with probability one by four. It will be equal to zero uh, with probability half, and it will be equal to <coughs> minus two with probability one by two. Now, what do we need to find? Is we need to find expectation of v t 
and his correlation fu uh, correlation function that is expectation of vt into vt plus tau if this vt is given by this formula here so this should be it yeah uh, if vt is summation n running from minus infinity to infinity i n g t minus n t and this g t minus n t this g this g t is a deterministic function this is a deterministic function of time okay so this is not a random quantity the only random quantity in this discussion is right uh, right now is this vt okay so what do we need to find is expectation of vt and expectation of vt uh, vt plus tau where this tau is some time delay or some time progression okay so let us start with finding this expectation of vt so this i can write as expectation of summation n running from minus infinity to infinity i n g t minus n t now this expectation follows a linearity property it is a linear function expectation function is a linear function by what do i mean by that so by that i mean that if i have if i need to find expectation of a plus b then this is equal to expectation of a plus expectation of b okay so now if this is true then i can write this as summation n running from minus infinity to infinity expectation of i n g t minus n t okay because it is just an application of linearity of expectation and nothing else sum of expectation is basically expectation sorry expectation of a sum is basically sum of expectation of individual sum components that i am having okay now this gt is a deterministic quantity so this gt this gt minus nt is a deterministic quantity it is not a random quantity so i can just take it outside the expectation so this i can write as summation n running from minus infinity to infinity expectation of i n g t minus n t okay so what do we have expectation of v t this is equal to summation n running from minus infinity to infinity expectation of i n into g t minus n t okay now let us find what is expectation of i n now just remember this i n is 2 with probability 1 by 4 it is 0 with probability 1 by 2 it is minus 2 with probability 1 by 4 now how to find the expectation of any random variable so this is simply i belong to 2 0 minus 2 i into probability of i n that it takes value as i so this i can write as 2 into probability that it is 2 that is 1 by 4 plus 0 into its probability that is 1 by 2 plus minus 2 into its probability that is 1 by 4 so this comes out to be 1 by 2 plus 0 minus 1 by 2 which is equal to 0 so now if i substitute this value which i have obtained in this equation here then expectation of vt will be equal to summation n running from minus infinity to infinity 0 times gt minus capital n uh, gt minus n capital t which is equal to 0 so therefore expectation of vt is simply equal to 0 okay now the next thing that we need to find is expectation of vt into vt plus tau okay 
So next that we need to find, we need to find the is expectation of Vt into Vt plus tau. This is the thing that we need to obtain. What do we have is Vt is equal to summation n running from minus infinity to infinity i n g t minus n t. So this v t plus tau will be simply summation n is equal to minus infinity to infinity i n g and we have to replace this t with uh, t plus tau. So this will be t plus tau minus capital N tau. So therefore expectation Vt Vt plus tau is equal to summation or oh, let me write it expectation of summation n running from minus infinity to infinity i n g t minus n t multiplied by summation n running from minus infinity to infinity i n g t minus g t plus tau minus n t like this <coughs> okay <coughs> yeah so therefore this expectation v t into v t plus tau i can write as expectation of summation n1 equal to minus infinity to infinity summation n2 equal to minus infinity to infinity i n1 i n2 g t minus n1 t g of t plus tau minus n2 t okay now what we have what argument we do uh, do we have is this i n I, I n and i n plus k for k not equal to 0 are independent or i n 1 and i n 2 are independent when n 1 is not equal to n 2 which means that if I split if uh, for these two summations for these two summations for those cases when n 1 is equal to n 2 this i n 1 and i n 2 will not be independent those will be dependent quantities however when n 1 is not equal to n 2 this i n 1 and i n 2 will be independent quantities so in order to handle this summation well what we'll do is we'll split it into two uh, summations two separate summations so first summation will be the case where n 1 is equal to n 2 and second summation will be the case where this n 1 is not equal to n 2 so let me take this quantity on the next page okay so we have this so this i can write as expectation of summation n1 equal to minus infinity to infinity i n1 square into g t minus n1 t g t minus g t plus tau minus n1 t this is the case where n1 equal to n2 plus summation n1 equal to minus infinity to infinity summation n2 equal to minus infinity to infinity but now this n2 should not be equal to n1 i n1 i n2 g t minus n1 t g t plus tau minus minus n2 t okay now we can apply the linearity property and consider that this gt functions are 
deterministic so this I can write as summation n1 equal to minus infinity to infinity expectation of i n1 square g t minus n1 t g t plus tau minus n1 t similarly I can write this uh, second term as summation n1 equal to minus infinity to infinity summation n2 equal to minus infinity to infinity n2 not equal to n1 expectation of i n1 i n2 g t minus n1 t g t plus tau minus n2 t okay so now you look at this part here this thing this thing here now i1 and i2 are independent so this i can write as expectation of i n1 into expectation of i n2 why since independent that's why i can write it in this way since now we have found this expectation of i n this expectation of i n came out to be zero so therefore i can substitute it as zero into zero which comes out to be zero which means that this term here goes to zero and hence this entire term entire second term goes to zero if that is the case then this expectation of vt into vt plus tau simply reduces to a single summation which is equal to summation n running from minus infinity to infinity expectation of i n square multiplied by g t minus g t minus n t into g t minus sorry g t plus tau minus n t and now the only term that we need to find is this expectation of i n square okay now again recall this i n is a random variable which takes the value as minus 2 with probability 1 by 4 0 with probability 1 by 2 and 2 with probability 1 by 4 so this expectation of i n square will be summation i n minus 2 0 2 i square p i n of i so if this is the case then this will be minus 2 square into its probability that is 1 by 4 plus 0 into its probability 1 by 2 plus 2 square into its probability 1 by 4 which is 4 into 1 by 4 plus 4 into 1 by 4 which comes out to be 1 into 1 which is equal to sorry which comes out to be 1 plus 1 which is equal to 2 and if I substitute this in this equation then what do we have is we have this expectation Vt into Vt plus tau this comes out to be summation n running from minus infinity to infinity this is 2 so I can take it outside g of t minus <coughs> n capital T into g of t plus tau minus n capital t. So let us summarize what we found out. We had vt as summation n running from minus infinity to infinity i n g t minus n capital t 
we found out that expectation of Vt was 0 and expectation of Vt into Vt plus tau this came out to be two times summation and running from minus infinity to infinity gt minus nt gt plus tau minus So this is what we found for this particular question. This was a very simple question. So let us, before ending this session, let us recap what all things we, what all things we found out, uh, we did in this session today. So this session we started with a recap of the week two content, uh, sorry, week seven content. Uh, we discussed about the multidimensional signals, frequency shift keying. Then we discussed about the linear modulation with memory, which is the NRZ, non-return to zero, and NRZ I uh, modulation techniques. Then we went for a non-linear uh, modulation technique with memory, which is basically the continuous phase frequency shift keying, which is CPFSK. And after looking at CPFSK, we looked at the continuous phase modulation, which is a generalization for the CPFSK, which is termed as CPM. And for that, we saw this phi t is given as the uh, as one of the component for the instantaneous phase, and uh, modulation index and other terms are given. Then we also saw what is full response CPM and what is partial response CPM. After having a recap of uh, week 7 content, we went on and uh, solved some questions. So we started with uh, a question which somewhat establishes the relation between the correlation coefficient for the signals in my band, pa uh, in band pass and their equivalent low pass components. So it establishes the relation between the correlation coefficient of the band pass and its equivalent low pass uh, signals. So this was the first question that we did and we found out that the correlation coefficient for the signal in band pass is basically the real part of this uh, correlation coefficient of its uh, low pass equivalent. This was a nice uh, relation that we observed today after solving this particular question. After that we looked at the concept of dimension of constellation and the number of bits that are required or the time uh, symbol duration that it consumes for transmitting <coughs> a particular symbol if a bit duration is given. So for we uh, said that the pulse amplitude modulation technique is a one dimensional technique. For PSK it is two dimensional constellation and FSK if it is an MFSK, MRE FSK then it is M dimensional. And based on that we found the results for the given, constell uh, given constellation or modulation techniques. And we said that this TS, the symbol duration, is nothing but k times the bit duration, where k are the number of bits required to transmit for that particular constellation, and uh, it is given by log m to the base 2. After that, we found out the symbol energy, average symbol energy, and the average bit energy for orthogonal FSK. Then we also found out the minimum Euclidean distance for uh, any two points in this MRE FSK and this minimum Euclidean distance uh, was independent of the quantity capital M. It was totally independent of the quantity capital M and it came out to be under root 2E. In general it came out to be under root 2E which is equal to the minimum Euclidean distance for that particular constellation. After that, we solved a simple numerical, which was based, uh, which uh, asked us to find the smallest value of t such that uh, any two signals are orthogonal. So we used the concept uh, uh, that this delta f, the minimum frequency deviation, should be <coughs> one by two t. Okay. After that, uh, we went on to uh, look at uh, some waveforms uh, that are generated for a given bit stream 
for uh, non return to zero modulation technique that is uh, nrz modulation technique for different bit streams and we found and we saw that if i'm transmitting all min my signal that i'll transmit uh, the waveform that i'll transmit will be a straight constant v volt value then we used the same bit streams but nrzi modulation technique and when we did that we observed that for all one stream instead of com constant value i was getting constantly changing waveform and this helps in uh, clock synchronization after that we looked at the average signal value and average energy value for nrz and nrzi which uh, and this averaging was with respect to time to be very specific it was with respect to time then we solved a question for a cpfsk and for the cpfsk signal we set we had said that this h should be equal to 0.5 and the pulse shaping uh, waveform that we have used gt was a rectangular pulse which uh, for a duration of capital t which was given by this formula that is zero for uh, t less than zero and t greater than zero it is non-zero or basically it is one by two t only for the range from zero to capital t so this was the uh, setting that we had and what we need to find we had to find this phi t comma i st that is signal uh, base bandpass signal and the instantaneous phase and frequency and the last question that i covered today was a very simple question where we have to given an information sequence and uh, that in information sequence at nth instant had a particular probability distribution and these i n's were independent of each other and this i n were taking three values with probabilities 1 by 4 1 by 2 and 1 by 4 and we had to find the expectation of the signal waveform that we are transmitting which is expectation of vt and its correlation and where this vt was given by this formula here after solving this entire thing we found out that the expectation of this vt was zero however the correlation came out to be something like this so this was all that i covered today if you have any questions uh, in any of the part which i covered today feel free to ask else you are free to leave the meeting thank you for attending today's session hope to see you in the next session as well thank you